Where we last left off, Alexander's campaign against the Achaemenid Empire was in jeopardy, only to be saved by the timely intervention of Apollo himself. The god of disease could create plagues by shooting his arrows at mere mortals, and thus, in this way, he smote the Greek traitor Memnon. With the incapacitation or death of many soldiers and the sudden death of their leader, confusion naturally followed amongst the Persian leadership. The entire plan to attack the Macedonian supply lines had been Memnon's own. Without his bold leadership, the offensive ground to a halt. Alexander's childhood friend and now Admiral Nearchus recognized this great opportunity. Concentrating his meager naval forces, he defeated some smaller Persian detachments in detail, convincing the remainder to GTFO. Seeing the gods' wrath enacted, the cowardly Spartans and Demosthenes quickly pretended that they weren't actually revolting, just, uh, going for a long walk with a bunch of their bros or something. You'd think Demosthenes would have realized that he was destined to be a lifelong serial failure, but this stubborn retard had many, many more failures to come. Just you wait. Anyways, remember how Alexander sent his men home the previous winter to go fuck their wives? Well, leaving many very satisfied, very pregnant women behind, the remainder of Alexander's coalition rejoined the army this spring, and together they descended upon Syria. The increasingly nervous King of Kings, Darius, summoned his advisors and warlords, finally realizing the gravity of the situation. This assembly involved a bunch of sycophantic plutocrats heaping platitudes on Darius, promising that he would obliterate these wayward Hellenes if only he led the army in person. In truth, they were rightfully afraid of failure should they attempt to lead the army instead. Of course, the only man who spoke the truth was a Greek named Charidemus. He calmly explained that there was no hope with this stratagem. Instead of effeminate Persian cowards leading the army, they should let an alpha Greek traitor like himself carry them to victory. Predictably, this man was immediately murdered after a bunch of triggered Persian soy boys denounced him for speaking the truth. Eventually, Darius grew exhausted of this pitiful display and dismissed them all. He would personally lead the Persian army, accurately deducing that abject failure would be the only result of giving the army to any of these other idiots. Summoning an enormous horde, twice the size of the Macedonian army, he rode west to meet the biggest threat the Achaemenid Empire had ever and would ever face. Alexander, meanwhile, faced the infamously narrow defile known as the Cilician Gates, with Persian soldiers en route to block the pass. So, the Vasilefs personally rode with some of his best men in a daring night attack, scaring the Persians shitless and opening the pass for his entire army. Upon hearing the news, the local satrap at Tarsus decided to just burn everything in sight in a pathetic attempt to stymie Alexander. So, Alexander, yet again, led an advance force in a lightning push, capturing the city and putting out the fires before they could even spread. Then, Alexander was suddenly struck with plague. It seems the demonic Persian gods sought their own retribution for what was done to Memnon. As Alexander lay in his tent dying, all the spineless doctors around him were too afraid to treat him, fearing that they would be blamed if Alexander died. All except a brave man named Philip, who conjured up some magic potion out of nowhere. In our historically objective, expert opinion, this was obviously the work of Apollo himself, who happened to be the god of healing and clearly wanted to flex on the Persians. But in any case, a letter arrived which claimed that this doctor had been bribed by Persian agents and actually intended to poison Alexander. Unshaken, Alexander made Philip read the letter as he drank the potion, searching for any reaction so that, if Alexander was indeed poisoned, he could just kill Philip as his last act and go away a happy man. But the Sigma male Philip just sorta of shrugged his shoulders, proving his innocence. And sure enough, Alexander was back on his feet almost immediately. Emerging from his tent, the army erupted in a deafening acclamation. Meanwhile, Parmenion moved to scout out and secure their next base of operations, capturing a small town called Issus. More importantly, his scouts also reported the presence of the Persian army to the south at a city called Soki, which was beyond the Syrian gates. 
Alexander thus led his army to rendezvous with Parmenion, leaving all the sick and wounded at Issus. Converging opposite the Syrian gates, the Vasileps hosted athletic games and sacrifices to the gods, ensuring that his men were in high spirits before the inevitable battle. However, the perfidious Persians never intended to march through the Syrian gates. Duplicitous Darius instead performed a lightning march north through the Ammonic gates. Finding the Macedonians sick and wounded at the town of Issus, the Persians did exactly what you would expect them to do. They cut off the hands of everyone they could find. There would be no mercy and no quarter in the upcoming battle. Anyway, Alexander soon caught word of the horrendous strategic situation. He was cut off from his supply lines, hemmed in by the mountain ranges and the ocean, lacked a large enough navy to retreat, and he faced a massive horde of over 100,000 men from every corner of the Achaemenid Empire.